Hello and welcome to the market update for Tuesday, October the 19th. Uh, we've had a nice rally for the last uh, few days. We'll take a look at those charts here in just a second. Um, um, I'll, I'll kind of walk you through the a couple of scenarios I was looking at last week. Um, it looks like with today's move, we've kind of eliminated uh, more the, the more bearish type scenario that could take place. Uh, however, you know, there's always news that can come out that can cause a market to go in any direction, uh, news that we may not be anticipating or thinking about. Uh, we are in earnings season, and so there can be some of these surprising moves that could spook the market. But uh, on the other hand, earnings season tends to be a little bit more of a, of a bullish time. Um, at least it has been for the last several years. Uh, this could be different just from the standpoint that we, we don't know. The market's really kind of focusing in on um, the, the effects the inflation is having on earnings and, and uh, not necessarily the current earnings, but projected earnings because the market always trades in the future what it's looking out in the future. So don't get too caught up when you're hearing earnings reports on on what's happening right now. It's it's really what's what does that mean for the future? Um, yeah, that's how a company could have a poor earnings report and still go up after the earnings report. Um, if they have a terrible earnings report, but their outlook is that things are going to get better, then the, the market will focus on the, the future, focus on the, the expectation that things will get better, and, and it'll, that, that's what can cause it to go up. So anytime you see that where you're like, boy, that was bad news, it doesn't make any sense. Why did that stock rally on bad news? That's usually the case. It's focusing on on something else. But that's why I don't get too caught up, though, with some of the numbers and things like that, because you have to, in, in some cases, you have to be smart enough to understand what that means for the future, you know, at least Fed announcements. I don't get caught up in, in trying to figure out what the Fed announcement is going to mean going forward, because there's so many variables that come into play, and there's there's experts out there that study this stuff. Let them figure it out, and and what they decide to trade based on that news. That's what I want. To, that's what I want to do is follow what they're what they're uh, thinking. So, that's the benefit of being a, a trend trader. Now, another thing to keep in mind. I, I mentioned this in the last update. Um, you know, people were talking about uh, earnings being really good so far last week, and and um, you know, could that mean that uh, the market isn't going to be worried about earnings? Remember, those earnings were from the financial stocks. Everybody expected the financial stocks to do well, especially in this in this environment. They have, um, so that wasn't a surprise. What what the what we're really wanting to focus on are the companies that could be impacted by the supply chain issues. So any any companies that are developing products and shipping products, we want to see what their earnings are like, and more importantly, what they're projecting for the future. Um, Anything related to um, it, it, well, anything that could have have uh, uh, issues with inflation. Um, so anyway, that that's those types of companies are the ones that we want to um, pay attention to, and and uh, they I think they're going to have a greater effect on what the market does than what the what the financials did last week. All right, let's let's move on here. Uh, look at our direction alerts here. Now, um, we're going to look at the individual charts here in a second. What we're going to see is we're going to see that we're, we're close to getting back to new all-time highs. Um, what's going to be interesting here is as we look at momentum and, and breadth and sentiment is do we start to move into these extreme ranges here? Because I think if we start to get the markets breaking out to new all-time highs, we start to see these, these indicators get into that extreme uh, reversal risk range, particularly the right side of that extreme reversal risk, we could be setting up for a, a big correction. And uh, and and now I, we're not there yet, um, but I want you to pay attention as if we do move in that direction, particularly if the markets do break out to all-time highs. I want you to pay attention to the sentiment of the market. Do you start to get a feel that the the traders are getting overly confident? A feeling like there's no way this market uh, this market is bulletproof. It shook off all these factors 
um, supply chain issues, inflation, and it just keeps going higher. There's, there's, you buy any dip there is because it's going to go up, back up again. There's going to be a point where traders get so confident in the trend that they feel like there's no way it can break, and that's when you want to, that's what you want to get out. Remember the saying I always, I always uh, share with you that when it feels safe to get in, it usually isn't. When it feels like there's no way you can lose that's usually the point where you're about to lose a lot. So um, again, I'm going to help you. We're going to pay attention to that. If we start to see those signals uh, flashing, because like I said, before big corrections, there's usually a lot of warning signals uh, that, that show up. It's just a matter of, are you paying attention to them? And um, are they, are they getting strong enough to where you, you have to, you have to um, uh, pay attention, you know, you have to do something about it. Um, and one of the things I'll probably do is start going to the sidelines, get get into a cash situation, uh, get out of find reasons to get out of the positions I'm in, and uh, wait for that big correction to take place so we can jump back in. So we're not there yet. Momentum is is rising. You can see on this chart that you can see the momentum indicators is shooting straight up right here. Sentiment again has already remained high. That that's been worrisome for me that it never came down. There was never really any fear in the selling. But that's what's going to fuel, if this thing goes back higher, that's what's going to fuel that that top, and create that top is the fact that those traders never really got scared and, and they're going to, they're, they're showing they're already overconfident. And um, that, that always happens before major, major corrections. You can see that uh, breadth is still lagging a little bit. So we're going to keep an eye on that to see if it uh, it moves up as well. I mean, it has been moving up. Um, but I'm moving up a little bit slower. Uh, we're, again, we're not in the extreme range there, so there's no reason to uh, to to assume that this trend can't continue. Um, the the buy sell ratios we're not you know we're not in an extreme area here. We do have the the buys outpacing the sells, uh, moving that positive direction there, but they're not very wide. They're not there's not a big distance here between the two. The buy sell ratios of the entire market are up above one. I mentioned that last week. I started buying, anticipation, anticipating that we would move above one. It's backed off a little bit here to where we're at about 1.34. Um, I would expect that to continue to rise. And, and what we start to see is something like this, where it, it really starts to, to get a little bit more extreme um, it, it, as those other indicators get into that, that overbought uh, state. Um, the the other sentiment indicator right here is, is starting to creep a little bit closer to that overbought, but still not there yet. Um, if it if it gets into this range, especially if it gets above it, then that could signal at least a near term pullback. This may not necessarily signal the, the the bigger correction, but if all the other indicators are getting overbought and this is in an, in an extreme range, then then that could that could signal that a, a pullback is imminent, meaning very close. And that's something we'll keep an eye on there. So now, what other thing I want to introduce or, or look at or start to look at would be under the index tab right here. The reason why I feel like there's still room to run, I'm not too concerned with the market getting, it's, the market isn't um, um, extremely overbought yet. And we're going to see that, that, on the, when we look at the individual charts, we're going to see that they're moving, we're, we're getting close to that extreme reversal risk range on the Dow and the S&P. I think we might even be moving into that range. But I'm not too concerned about it yet because of the, the, the buy-sell ratios here. Typically, so for instance, the um, you take a look at the S&P 500, it's at a 1.75. That means it's it's almost at a two to one, meaning there's almost twice as many buys as sells. That's not an, a, an extreme range. When you start to get to double digits or close to double digits, when it starts to become 10 to one, um, 12 to one or something like that, um, that's when you're, you're getting a, a little extreme. If you look at the transports, the Dow transports, they are getting into a little bit of extreme area here. Where they're an 11 to 1. There are double digits. There's only one sell, 11 buys. So we'll pay attention to that. Now we'll look at that chart. That chart has been uh, reversing its downtrend. Um, um, 
So it's been, it's one of those leading indicators you kind of keep an eye on. But anyway, we'll start to, to monitor this a little bit to see if, if we start moving. Now, it can move very quickly into the double digits, uh, especially if these holds that are in the middle are very close to going to buys. Then you could get a nice big up day and suddenly jump from two to one to, you know, eight to one or something. Um, so it can happen pretty quickly, but we'll keep an eye on that to see if that starts to, to signal that uh, things are, are getting overbought here. Now, let's take a look at uh, individual charts. Uh, so what, what I was concerned about last week. I think it was in the stock specific class. I, I point, might have pointed this out, but <clears throat> as we were rising up right here, I was still a little bit concerned that this could be maybe a bearish ABC pattern. As we were right up in this area right here, could this be wave A, wave B, wave C, and then we we're going to get a drop? Typically, ABC patterns will end, not, not always, but usually they'll end when wave C is about the same the keyword there is about about the same length as wave A. So if this was wave A right here, that point right here would be about where, in fact, let me use the highlight so we can see a little bit better. That would be about where wave C would be about the same length as wave A. Um, so really over the, over the last, you know, Friday to Monday, if we were gonna reverse, that's where we should have reversed and started to sell off. Instead, we moved higher yesterday, we moved even higher today. Um, it, it, it makes it a lot more likely, again, still anything can happen, but it makes it much more likely from a probability standpoint that this was the pullback right here, probably wave A, wave B, wave C right here, and that that we're charging higher. We're gonna we're gonna probably end up breaking out now, breaking out to new all time high. Now We've had a pretty good run for the last few days, so it wouldn't surprise me if we get back up into here that we pull back a little bit or move sideways a little bit. Um, it'd be really shocking if we just blast through it uh, just because of how far we've run, how quickly we've run. Tip, remember, typically the market is gonna stair step. It's, it's, gonna, it's gonna have a burst of a move and then kind of pull back and a burst of a move and pull back. And this would be an area where it'd be more likely to pull back is, is right at that previous all time high. But again, I've seen crazy market conditions where you think it should pull back and it really gets crazy. And we saw that sentiment is that, that, that traders are just not worried right now. Sometimes that can get into just a, what we call a hyper bullish environment where you keep going up day after day after day and it just it makes no sense, but it's happening. Now, if you're already in a position or in positions and it just keeps going crazy like that, it's great because you're making a lot of money each day as it goes higher and higher and higher. If you're not in a position, I hate that environment because you're, you're waiting for a pullback, you're waiting for an entry and it's not giving it to you and you're missing out. Um, and that's where you can sometimes make a mistake and start chasing it. You know, you hear that term fear of missing out or FOMO. Um, that's what they're talking about is you, you get to a point where you, you're, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're being patient, but it looks like it's, it, you're missing out on it. And then you start chasing it. And a lot of times that's an emotional decision. It usually doesn't end well when you're, when you're doing that kind of trading. And it's usually a sign that you're at a top because, you know, that's what, that's what people that don't know what they're doing are, are very vulnerable to is chasing, uh, that or, or reacting to that fear of missing out. Uh, they're, they're seeing how much money they could have been making if they'd been in a position and they start uh, jumping in at a bad, probably jumping in right at the end, right when it's about to turn. So anyway, uh, now you can see, oh, actually the s and is not in the extreme range there yet. So it, it's showing it still has some room to run. Remember, it, even if it gets into the extreme range, it's the far right side of the extreme range that you start to really, uh, get concerned about um, the position being overbought or in a position where it could start to, to turn or get close to that right side. Um, the Dow is in the extreme reversal risk, um, but again, it's it's not at the far right side. And, and really, you know, all this is really telling me is that it's just what I, I, I talked about, that we've had a pretty good run over the last few days. We're probably due to either move sideways a little bit, consolidate or pull back a little bit, which would cause that, that 
cause that slide bar to move off the extreme and move it back into the buy area right here. But we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll see what, what happens. But again, the Dow's been rebounding pretty nicely. <clears throat> Let me go back to the Dow chart here. One thing it does, or let's see, what chart was that that I was looking at? That I think it might have been the Dow chart here that, uh, you, know, I, it, you know, the fact that it, it came up and then came all the way back down into here, that's a, that's a pretty, a deep pullback, um, yeah. I mean, it, it can still break out higher, and, and but once it breaks out, then you really have to really focus on bearish reversal signals because it's um, it, 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 it'll probably be pretty extreme at that point. Uh, the cues, again, I was worried a little bit about this lower low right here that took place, but again, where we're at, it's it, it, it it's it. With this up day to day, it makes it less likely that this is a bearish ABC pattern, that, that things are going to go down, that it looks like it's going to head up. It is lagging a little bit um, from the other other market moves. You know, typically, the NASDAQ is leading. So that's a little bit concerning is if the Dow and the S&P were to break out to new all-time highs before the queues, um, that would be a little bit of a, of a bearish divergence that, that I would um, – that I would think about. As far as the overbought, we're not even in the buy range here, so we're we're still. Uh, but this shows you that it's lagging the other indicators. You can see um, you'd want to see a little bit more outperformance. Now there's a lot of tech stocks that are reporting earnings. Netflix reports after the bell today um, that could drive this. This could this could play catch up pretty quickly if if they there's a positive move off of those earnings reports. So. Um, We'll see. We'll keep an eye on that. And then there's a lot of the, you know, when I talked about earlier um, about companies that uh, are maybe more affected by the supply chain issues and and um, inflation, um, a lot of those are in the Nasdaq 100. So, uh, you know, that could be, uh, we could see a reaction either way, uh, positive or negative off of that um, when those, those, those earnings reports start to come out. Russell 2000 again. You just have on this one chart. You just have to kind of back out, and we're going to just kind of focus on this longer term range right here. It's right in the middle, so it does show me it could have room to to move back up here. Um, it's close to going to that extreme range, but uh, you know, as far as trying to predict the the day-to-day -day direction of the of the Russell it's basically been moving sideways for several months um, and um, and that's actually a little bit of a negative if, if the other indexes break out and this one doesn't end up breaking out um, you know that, that that could be you know usually the small caps are kind of leading the way and the reason for that is because this is where when you see the small caps outperforming the the other uh, indexes, it, it's telling you that professional traders are willing to take bigger risks. Um, you know, a, a company like Apple is not likely to disappear overnight. I mean, uh, it's a safe, it's a pretty safe uh, investment. Um, but you get one of these startup companies uh, that, that uh, you know, they're, it's a, it's a $20 stock and, um, you know, they're not making any money yet, but they could be big. Um, well, you know, there's more risk there. Those companies could disappear overnight, but they also could go from $20 to $500, right? There's, there's, there's much more upside. You can make a lot more money if you're right about those small companies and those small companies do perform. Um, so when you see the, the Russell 2000, um, outperform the other indexes, it's telling you that, that these professional traders are willing to take that risk. They're usually not willing to take that risk unless they're in a strong, they believe they're in a strong bull market or a strong market that's, that's going to keep going up. And so that's why we, we look at the Russell and, and, and you know, so what, what do we make of that? Well, over the last several months, well, what it's telling us is that there really hasn't been an appetite to, to take on a lot of risk over the last several months. Now, a lot of this is due to inflation uh, or the, or the, 
the uh, risk of inflation, which we've, we've already started to see, those, those smaller companies that aren't making money, um, well, obviously their future earnings are going to be diminished because of inflation. And so that's, that's why you, these, these big institutional investors have been willing to invest heavily in those, those small cap stocks. So um, if, if, you, if we do see the market break out and, and the Russell 2000 breakout, that'd be a good, that'd be a good bullish sign that, that uh, those professional traders are, are pretty confident in the direction of those smaller companies. Anyway, so that's one of the reasons why we, we watch the, the Russell and pay a lot of attention to the Russell 2000. All right, um, bonds. Now, bonds have made a, a kind of a whip sign move the last uh, uh, couple of weeks or so. We had an impulsive move down, and then we had this impulsive move up. Usually, when I see that, uh, it's an indication of a of a bottom. Um, I would tend to lean more towards uh, bonds moving higher. You know, if you take that stair step, when you're stair stepping down, you have impulsive down, corrective, impulsive down, corrective, impulsive down. When you reverse trend, typically, not always, but you'll see impulsive down followed by impulsive up. You can also look to see if, if you were having lower highs and lower lows during that stair step down, and then now suddenly you get an impulsive move up that gives you a higher high for the first time. And then very often you start to, you know, you'll start stair stepping up now. You'll, you'll, you'll have higher highs, higher lows. That's kind of what it looks like right here that you have impul you had impulsive down, corrective, here's your step, impulsive down, then you get impulsive up, it went to a higher high. So you had lower high, lower low, and then now you've got a higher high right here. It's pulled back a little bit today, but it makes you wonder if that's just the step. It could give you a higher low. Now, if I were trading bonds, I'd wait for that confirmation. I'd wait for it to, to pull back today and see if it starts to move back up again. Um, if you wanted to buy the TLT or something like that, I'd wait wait for that little bit of confirmation. But it's 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 starting to act like it could be reversing its trend. Just real subtle clues. Now, if it were to have another big down day, that would kind of maybe wipe that out. This would look a little bit more impulsive again to the downside. Um, but if it, as long as it kind of chops around in here more sideways, it would it would have characteristics of of, um, of moving higher. You could also make the argument that it's looking like a inverse upside down head and shoulders pattern if it holds right in here. And typically, the left and right shoulders will end in about the same spot. So that's something to keep an eye on um, over the next couple of days is see if it holds in this area. It doesn't have to stop exactly at the previous uh, correction there, but you'd want it to be pretty close to that uh, that left shoulder if it is an inverse head and shoulders pattern. Um, so I would lean a little bit more towards uh, bonds looking a little bit more bullish. Um, as of right now, we'll see if that changes in the next uh, few days or so, but that, that's what I'd be looking for there. Uh, gold, now gold, all we're doing with gold is, is um, it's kind of like the Russell 2000. You're going to just draw a trend line up here. Yeah, it touches right, right there, right here, right here, right here. And I'm going to draw a trend line down the bottom right here. It touches right there. Right, you have to have at least two touches in order to draw a trend line. We've got at least the two down here. But this is the sideways range that gold is in. Um, the longer term chart is is not real clear either. So I would just assume if, if you see gold break up above this area right here, that'd be more bullish. If it breaks down below this area here, that'd be more bearish. And we're right smack in the middle. So, um, so my conclusion is that gold could go either way uh, at this point. And and that's what the chart is showing you. It could go either way. It's been going back and forth. Um, it's not really showing a clear trend direction. So um, we want to recognize that. Yeah, you know, you could have other reasons of, of being bullish on gold. You say, well, inflation is really going to come, and that's going to it's going to cause gold to soar. You see commercial on TV talking about that or whatever, wanting you to buy gold. Um, but that's not what the chart is saying. The chart is saying, I don't know where the hell I want to go. Excuse my language, but that's what, that's what the chart is saying. I don't know where I want to go. So we got to recognize that and recognize where it would tell us where it wants to go. Okay. And, and these are the points that I would be focused on. 
this would give us a clearer idea that, that gold is breaking out to the upside if it can get above this area here. This would be bearish if it, could, if it drops below that point there. All right, oil. Oil's been the big talk. Um, we see it as far as sectors. It's at the top of the sector list. It's where a lot of our trades have come from, uh, and it should be. This is what's been working and what's what's really been um you, you want to talk about the most bullish sector it's been oil uh, over the last uh, few weeks uh the trend is still up we had a little bit of a bearish reversal candle yesterday but we reversed that today it's right back to going up today we've had these little pullbacks along the way but it, they've been real shallow meaning that what that tells me is that it tells me this trend is very strong. It tells me anytime there's any sort of a pullback, any little pullback, people are buying that, that dip and buying that pullback. Now up here, we're still in the buy range. We're not in extreme. So this tells me there's, although this looks pretty stretched just visually, that looks like a pretty, pretty long run right there. The the fact that we're not even in the extreme reversal risk range tells me that there's this could still run and, and let it run until it's done. Um, now, I, based on where we're at, we're probably in the later stages of the trend. Um, we do need to recognize that. That uh, that um, so so it, it, as far as making a trading decision, if you're in oil stocks, you stay in them. Um, you, there's really no reason to get out of them yet. As far as I'm not seeing a lot of warning signs in the trend to, to get out. Yesterday was a little bit of a bearish reversal day, but. But uh, if you start to see a deeper pullback, we haven't seen a deeper pullback for a while. So if you start to see a bigger sell-off, that could be a signal, a warning signal to to get out. But if you're in oil stocks, you stay in them. If you're if you're looking to get in, you got to recognize that you're probably getting in near the the end of the of the trend. You're getting in the later stages of the trend. I'm not saying it couldn't keep going for a few months or or what have you, but you're you got to recognize that you're in a little bit of a riskier spot right here. And so just manage it accordingly, meaning that you're, you're, if it's, if you get in and, and a few days later you get a big sell off and it drops, you, got, you probably need to stop out and get out because you, there's probably, you, you probably got in right when it's about to reverse the trend. So, um, I'm not saying you can't enter into oil stocks here, but just recognize, again, recognize the conditions. So that you're not caught off guard, you're not wondering what's going on, how did this happen? Well, if, it, if you get in today and it starts selling off big tomorrow, you can't sit back and say, I, "What just happened? How did that happen?" No, you recognize it. You recognize that you're getting in at a riskier spot at a later stage of a trend. Own it, you know. Um, you know, just make sure you're you're not. It, it shouldn't surprise you if if it suddenly started to to sell off at that point. All right. The dollar. Now, the dollar. Uh, there's a, a couple ways to look at this. Uh, if I'm bullish on the dollar, I'm looking at this as here's the trending move up, and this is kind of your ABC correction here. This, this is a little bit more choppy, more sideways, and you're expecting the dollar to continue to go higher. Now, it does concern me a little bit that today we dipped a little bit below that breakout area. Here was the previous high. We were trying to hold it right here. We dipped a little bit below it, but we do have a little bit of a bullish candle. Um, well, it's an in, in, indecision candle. When you have the, we call these spinning tops. It is indecision, but we did open lower and we're at the, at the moment right now, we're trading higher than where we opened, which is a, is a, this is an indecision candle, but it's a little bit more bullish uh, from the standpoint that it's, 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 trading higher than where it opened, still lower than where it closed the day before. So it'll show that the dollar is down today. But we'll see if this is that that's if this is a C leg. If it starts to move up, that would be mean that this is a ABC pattern here, correction within the uptrend. Went to higher high right here. We'll be looking to see if it moves up and that creates a higher low. The other argument could be that that this was the correction right here, and we did break out to a, a new high right here. So here was the correction. Here was the move, the impulsive move. Here's the correction. Here was a small impulsive move higher, and that this is starting a move down. This is impulsive down, although you had a little bit of a 
correction right here, but it could be stair stepping down. And if it keeps dropping, that would be what I would conclude is that that um, it might be in a downtrend. You, you'll want to pay attention to kind of the subtle movements here. This would be an impulsive. This would be corrective. This would be impulsive. This drop down today would be considered impulsive. Does it move a little bit sideways right here? If so, maybe it's not done dropping. Uh, if it if it is, this is the end of the correction. It should have an impulsive move up. When it starts to move back up, it should move up rather sharply off of this, kind of that V-shaped bottom right there. So that's something you can kind of keep an eye on there. But those would be my, my two arguments. So I would again I would lean more towards this being a correction for a move higher. That that would be my expectation, but we'd want to read the price action right here. If it, if it gets more choppy right there, that that might mean there's further to drop. If it if it shoots up right here off of today's move, then it'd be more a lot more bullish for the dollar. The VIX, the VIX is is moving lower. That tells again that, that this is a measure of sentiment. It tells me there's no fear in the market right now. In fact, we have to worry about here is that we're on the far left side of the extreme reversal risk. Um, now there's still room to go a little bit more extreme, but we are, from a sentiment standpoint, we're in an area where we could get a pullback. Um, it, 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 you know, there's just, and, and we're in an area where we could get a larger pullback, possibly. Now, the, usually the larger pullbacks, you, you start with the high sentiment, and then you get the charts that become overbought. What we don't have yet is the charts overbought. That's the only thing that's missing. The sentiment is really high. Um, pretty extreme. Um, once we see stocks get and those indexes get overbought, man, that's when you you really might want to consider going to the sidelines and and waiting for that bigger pullback. Um, but so we're getting kind of close, and we'll we'll keep an eye on that. But yeah, sentiment's pretty um, pretty high right now. Uh, the chip stocks have rebounded right here, but you know compared to some of the other charts, they really haven't been. This is a, one of those leading indicators, and you, you'd like to see. I, I would have loved to see the chip stocks almost breaking out to new all-time highs if they're really leading the way. They've been lagging a little bit, and remember, we're kind of comparing this chart to, or comparing the chip stocks to uh, the the, the uh, Nasdaq 100. Um, and you might have heard it. That, you know that. We, we we compare the Dow transports with the Dow industrials, and that's based on the, what we call the Dow theory. Uh, you can go Google that if you want a little bit more information on what the Dow theory is. Um, but there's a lot of people nowadays that say that the it, it's it's not the same anymore. That the, the you know the transportation stocks aren't the best uh, leading indicator of the market. I still think they are, by the way. Uh, I I think they need to be used and, and looked at. A lot of people say the chip stocks are the new transports. That they, there's chips in everything nowadays, and and that you know how however they're doing is is a better indication of how the whole market is doing. Um, but I I think we can look at both, and and um, although chips have rebounded a little bit, they were lagging, and and that does concern me that uh, you know chips came all the way back down to here. If you kind of connect the tops of this move, it. it it just looks like even if we do get back up to these highs, it, it looks like it's some of the damage is, is already kind of showing up that it, it may not have as big a breakout if it does uh, move higher, but um, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, see if, if chips start lagging a little bit. Some of those chip stocks are, are going to have earnings coming up here. That, that could be a, a factor. Um, and then the transports, I talked about how these were outperforming. Uh, they're, they're, it's acting like an uptrend. You know, you had a higher low right here. You know, I was looking back here where we had a higher low. We were, we were kind of seeing if we were going to reverse trend. We were waiting to kind of go to a higher high right here. It never, never materialized. Ended up dropping back down. You end up with a lower high and a lower low. It just reversed back down. But then since then, um, you've got a higher low here. You went to a higher high right here, pulled back, had a high, higher low there, went to a higher high here. It's stair-stepping up. It's acting like an uptrend. 
and you now have broken out above this right here. You went to a higher high right there. So this this definitely looks like the transports are turning around. One thing that, that concerns me a little bit is that we're at the far right side of that extreme reversal risk. It went up a, a pretty quick. So we'll keep an eye on that. Again, it, stocks can stay at this far right side for a little while. They can stay overbought for a little while. But there again, if this is a leading indicator of the rest of the market, then we should see the Dow Industrials, and that we already have seen them move into the extreme reversal risk. We should see them move that that far right side of that extreme reversal risk here pretty soon. So um, keep an eye on that. Um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin's been on a tear. I wouldn't want to chase that move. I mean, that's a pretty sharp move right there. If you're, if so, if you're looking at Bitcoin and, and you're hearing people talk about Bitcoin, you want to jump in. Uh, again, know that you're probably getting in the later stages of that trend. Um, I probably want to wait for the next little pullback or consolidation. Doesn't have to necessarily pull back, but I'd want to see it start moving sideways a little bit, consolidate a little bit. All right, so so anyway, that's kind of the, the environment when I would say it's tilted a little bit more uh, bullish. So, um, you know, if we do see something we want to get into, um, we can jump into that. Let's take a look at a couple of individual stocks. Um, again, oil is at the right at the top of the list as it should be. And um, I'm going to go into the hold section right here. I like this CDEV right here, uh, 98 strength rank, Centennial Resource Development. Now, one thing you do want to keep an eye on with some of these stocks uh, that you pull up, you want to make sure they're trading on an exchange, the NASDAQ or the Amex or um, New York Stock Exchange. That If it's trading on the OTC, that stands for over the counter, it means that it's, it's um, it's, it probably means that company is too small that you don't want to trade it, um, too much risk in it. Um, and, and again, the, the, some of those, those OTC stocks will show up uh, on the scans. But what I like about this chart is you got this nice bowl-shaped move, and then you've got this correction right here. You got an ABC correction. By the way, this is, what I, this is exactly what I think could happen with the S&P. We have this, you have this big run-up. To the previous high, and then you can get a pullback or a little bit of a consolidation right there. Now this is a great pattern if it forms all the way. We if it if it goes back and forth even for a few more weeks, this is what we call a cup with handle pattern. Now there's a cup and there's the handle. When these things break out, the rule of thumb is that that you can take the distance from the top of the bowl to the bottom of the bowl and project that upward. And that's potentially how far it could move out of that pattern. Now, doesn't mean it'll go there immediately. Doesn't mean it has to go there. That's why they call it a rule of thumb. It's not a law. It's not a, it doesn't happen all the time, but it, it can give you a lot of confidence that you got a good pattern there when you see that pattern. That's a pattern you want to learn to recognize immediately. Um, that's why you hear me talk about the bull, seeing the bull shaped move. But I start seeing a bowl-shaped move form. I know I, I have plenty of trades on the right side of the bowl. You can trade it from down in these levels up to the bowl. Very often, it's going to get back up to the top of the bowl. If you miss that trade, then see if you get a cup with handle pattern by the breakout. You have a, a nice chance for that thing to take off off of that that pattern there. But we like we like bowl-shaped patterns. They tend to work out pretty well uh, most of the time. I like that one. Uh, let me switch just the signals here. It, it, it wasn't a buy signal recently, went to a hold. Uh, we'll throw that in the watch list and, and put an alert on it to let us know when it when it goes from hold to back from hold back to buy. All right, uh, and then 
Another one in this list, I like the CPE right below it, 98 strength rank. Kind of the same thing, same chart, which you would expect. These are all in the same sector, so you'd expect a lot of the same similar patterns. Um, by the way, you know, there are some of these bull-shaped moves that they come all the way back down. They, they don't end up working out. And if this thing keeps dropping, we're waiting for it to buy signal anyway. So if, if it keeps dropping, it doesn't hurt us. Any, if it keeps it keeps going down. So we do want to be patient and wait for that, that buy signal. Let's add this to the watch list. And we'll put an alert on it. All right, finally, let's look under finance. I like this uh, CDR right here, Cedar Realty Trust, 93 strength rank, but we're still decent, decent strength rank there. And again, it's just, you had this nice impulsive move here and it's just kind of been consolidating. And you'll notice that when it, so it probably hit that extreme reversal risk, but then it started consolidating it backed off of that. Now we're waiting for it to go back to a buy, so we'll, we'll throw that in the watch list. By the way, it doesn't mean I'm gonna trade everything in the watch list, as you already know by now if you've been following things. Uh, sometimes it'll, with some of these, they take off too quick. Uh, I don't wanna chase them. Um, But that's part of what I'm trying to show you in the portfolio as well is, is be patient. You know, you have to have the bus, bus stop approach, you know, that, okay, I missed that bus, but another one's going to come around. Uh, we're going to get another one that comes around and, and um, you know, don't be too upset that you missed a, missed a move. As far as the portfolio management, not a lot to, to do. Um, oh, I did want to point out, I did get out of, I got out of um, uh, STKS. I think I got out of that on Friday, yeah, 15th. Uh, let me pull that one up here so we can, I can show you why. STKS. I had a, it, you know, we had this big run up right here. We were in the, we had the far right side of the extreme reversal risk at the time, right up in here. And then I had this bearish reversal day. This is what we call a shooting star candlestick formation. It, it opened right here, ran all the way up to here, and then came all the way back down and closed lower than where it opened, but still higher than the day before. That's a very bearish candle formation. And so, you know, I, I decided it, it, I could have waited for a little bit more confirmation, wait for it to close below the low of the previous day, you know, something, something else. But um, I decided um, and just go ahead and, and take profits on it. I can always get back in. That's always my mentality. If it if it gives me another opportunity to get back in, I, I can always get back in. Now, immediately on Monday, it, it raced back up again. And then so it, at first I was looking at that yesterday thinking, oh, maybe I should have waited for that extra confirmation, waited for it to close, at least close below the previous day. But then today it's down, um, it reversed it right back down again. That's that's a bearish price action today. It does look like it would it would probably close below the low of the previous day. It's probably gonna do that today. So if that was my exit strategy, I would have gotten out today and I would have gotten out of the worst price than I did on Friday. Ultimately, I would have gotten out of the worst price I did on Friday. Now, you can play this game all day long. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. We're always geniuses in hindsight. You know, we, we always would have made the right decisions when we're looking back in hindsight. Um, but again, the way I look at it, when you're at the far right side of the extreme reversal risk and you're getting a bearish reversal candle, you weigh the probabilities. What's the probability that this is going to go up much further versus the risk of it dropping sharply? The risk is much greater. That it's going to drop sharply off of that, off of this context here. And, and, and that may play out over the next couple of days. This thing might be all the way down to here. 
And so that risk of trying to get that extra gain from yesterday versus the risk it could end up all the way down here, we can give back all of this big bullish day that we got last week. You know, it, it just from from a probability standpoint, I felt like that's the right right decision to make. And that, and um, you know, at some point you got to take profits. And and uh, now in some cases I've done that and it keeps going. And yeah, you feel like you you missed out on it but again. You have, to, you have to have the bus stop mentality. It's another bus is going to come around. We'll have another move. Uh, so anyway, that I got out of that one. Uh, now I might. I, you know, I might be, well, let's look at our portfolio here. Let's go through these trades. This is possible. I, I might end up um, doing something similar with Tesla. Although I might give it another day. Um, so GDYN, um, we're finally kind of back to the, getting the buy signal here. It's, we got in uh, right here, expecting it to break out and it came back down very close to getting stopped out um but it's kind of looking like it's turned the corner we should start to get some nice movement out of that that's bow now we had a little bit of a tighter stop on this one i think our stop was right below here we're still okay this has gone back to a hold signal here but this still looks looks okay it should should start to move back up, but I just want to point that out that we're not giving this thing much room to kind of to kind of bounce back and forth. It is in, in the oil sector, so you know the oil charts still look bullish, and so we'll assume this is going to resume that uptrend here. ASPN, um, yeah, no reason to, to a little bit of a pullback right here, but no reason to get concerned about this one. INKS, same thing. Again, it, the pattern looks good. It's, we're just waiting for it to take off, start making the move. You got the whole bit of a bull shaped move there. See Tesla, so we, we're in the far right side of the extreme reversal risk. So we can use a, 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 a tighter exit strategy, a tighter trailing stop if you want to this is a this was actually a little bit more of a hanging man candlestick formation it's actually dropped a little bit more from from when i started class you could get out simply because you're getting a bearish candle today or we could wait um tomorrow to see if it can close below today's low and give you a close below the low of the previous day and i think i might do that uh, just because the rest of the market still looks Pretty pretty bullish. I, um, and I think, but there again, that, that'll be the risk. Is 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 the is there really much more upside versus the downside risk? I I don't know. I I you know sometimes I'll look at these right before the market closes and make the final decision on it. Um, uh, I mean, the argument could be just what I just went through, that, that is there much more upside reward potential versus the downside risk? Um, yeah, I'll have to look at that at the end of the day. And, you know, a lot could happen. This candle could look different by the end of the day. Maybe it rallies all the way back up. And, um, you know, I decided to give it one more day to see if it can close below the previous day. We'll see. It, but if I do decide to get out, it, we're close to getting out of this one, um, just based on the conditions it's in right now. So TTI, a little pullback here, still waiting for that one to take off again. It broke out of this kind of inverse head and shoulders pattern right here. So it should, you could take the distance from the top of the head to the neckline and project that upward. It puts you right up in this area right here as a minimum target. Then you got this target up here. So I would assume it's headed back up to this previous high up here. But this just looks like a pullback within the uptrend. Now, if we do start to move higher here, I'll probably adjust the stop up to right below that low. 
but I, I want to see it get going a little bit first. IRIX, same thing. Looks like it's starting to move today. If it can, if it can kind of break out above this area here, I'll move the stop. Actually, I, I don't know if I have my stop down. I think my stop is down below here. I'll move it up to there. Yeah, I think I, some of these I had really tight stops on. I have to look at them again, but uh, that one I think was down a little bit lower. Rig hasn't moved yet, but again should move out of this consolidation right here. That impulsive move up should should take off here in a little bit. SMLP yeah, still looks okay. Still looks like it's just kind of consolidating. TELL, yeah, it's pulled back a little bit today, but I think I have my stop below here. I should, so it's a little bit of a tighter stop, but it's probably a good thing. All right, GDYN, we're back to GDYN. So that's kind of what we're holding right now. You saw most of those charts look like they're just starting to move again or potentially could start to move again. So we're still down a little bit, um, a little bit more in the thousand, uh, well, actually almost 2000. But once that takes off, once those charts start to take off, we should start to see that jump up. We should get positive there pretty quick. All right. Um, real quickly here, the watch list. Uh, uh, I'm going to just jump down to the one I might add today, this ORMP, 98 strength rank. It looks like, looks like it's going to go back to a buy signal today. I like that it's held this trend line right through here, and it's getting ready to break out. There's a lot of pressure building right here. If it can break out of that, it could really take off. I'm going to use a pretty tight stop, though. I'm going to get it right below here. Just because it shouldn't, if it, if it drops below that, that low right there, it'll break that trend line. If it drops below this low, it'll break that trend line. And, and I probably want to be out of it uh, if it does that. Um, so that low would be... Twenty-one dollars and forty-one cents. I guess say about twenty-one dollars and forty cents will be my stop. And I don't have much cash left, so maybe that's another reason to go ahead and take profits on Tesla. I think I'll get out of Tesla today, free up a little bit of capital here in case we need to put it to, to work for us. Um, Oh wait, uh, that's not what we want to add to portfolio here. Here we go. And the stops at 21.40. Yeah, we can buy a few more shares. We only have 6,000 in cash left though, so let's see. Yeah, that's I don't I wouldn't have enough cash. That would be let's see the let's would three hundred be. I'll just do three hundred. I don't wanna I don't wanna I'll give us about fifteen hundred in cash left. And then we'll get some more cash when I sell. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and just sell um, Tesla right now. Might as well. Okay, it's currently at 869.11. It says 870.11, but uh, again, I go off of what it currently is. Um, make sure it's 
as accurate as possible there. We're going to make 1200 bucks on that. That was not bad. Uh, let's go ahead and sell. All right, so that'll bring in a little bit more cash. Um, we got 14,000 in cash. Probably should have done the opposite where I, I sold Tesla and then bought the OMRP. I don't want to have too big of a position on OMRP though. I, I think that's good. That's fine with what we have there. All right. Um, that's it. Have a great week. Or we'll see you on Thursday for the stock specific class. Bye everyone.